and welcome to In Case You Missed It, a roundup of the latest climate and environmental news. It's been a bad week for the oil industry. Such a shame, I always like those guys. In just one day, three major US pipelines were shut down. Atlantic Coast, Dakota Access, and Keystone XL pipelines. In the case of the Dakota Access Pipeline, the judges ruled that as federal officials failed to carry out proper analysis of the potential environmental impacts, something you might think would be key to check before you start pumping oil, the pipeline needs to be shut down from August until that analysis has been completed. The Keystone XL Pipeline has been delayed until at least 2021 due to a missing permit, and the Atlantic Coast Pipeline has been permanently cancelled. This is enormously positive news for water protectors and indigenous groups from local communities who've been resisting these pipelines, which could pollute water and damage sacred sites on top of devastating climate impacts for the best part of a decade. Although two of these pipelines will be shut down for now and potentially tied up in years of paperwork, we should keep in mind that this isn't a total cancellation of those projects. More work needs to be done to protect people and the planet from these dirty and dangerous fossil fuel projects. Last week was a big opportunity for China Chancellor Rishi Sunak and the government to kickstart our economy with millions of green jobs and show that they're serious about steering us away from the climate and nature crisis. But the Chancellor's summer statement ended up missing the mark. The government pledged £3 billion to improving the energy efficiency of homes and buildings. Sounds great, right? But that's just a third of the £9.2 billion the party promised to improving energy efficiency in its manifesto last year. It's also a little bit smaller than the £36 billion invested in carbon cutting measures by Germany and the £13.5 billion commitment from France as part of their economic recovery packages. The Chancellor's plans should have prioritised clean transport, smart power, nature restoration and creating a circular economy for waste. Because as Greenpeace reminded him on his way to work, all roads must lead to a green recovery. Sound like an unrealistic tree-hugging dream? Click the link below to find out how to make this a reality. People have talked about the idea of nature returning during lockdown, but unfortunately something far less welcome has been making a comeback as well. Plastic pollution. Whilst plastic is key for use in medicine and PPE for frontline staff, it's also become common to see face masks and gloves littering streets, parks and waterways, alongside plastic pint glasses and coffee cups. And switching to plastic packaging just isn't necessary. Experts have said that plastic packaging doesn't offer special protection when it comes to food and drink, and that reusable cups and containers are perfectly safe to use if you wash them properly and outlets follow no touch and social distancing rules. It's also possible to make or buy reusable face masks. And if you have to use single use mask and gloves to dispose of them carefully rather than littering, helping to stem the flow of plastic pollution. We all love a villain with a redemption arc, and what better time for the biggest and baddest climate villains to turn it all round and play their part in building a clean, green future. Unfortunately, BP contractors Transocean have decided to double down on their villainous ways by taking Greenpeace to court for trying to stop them from drilling for 30 million barrels of oil, resulting in an £80,000 fine for Greenpeace. Seeing as we already have far more oil and gas than we can afford to burn, what's another 30 million barrels? Come on, activists can be so unreasonable sometimes. Never fear, Greenpeace successfully challenged BP's drilling permit in the North Sea and got the government to admit that the process of awarding the permit in the first place was unlawful. Greenpeace has now launched a legal bid to get BP's drilling permit cancelled for good. If the legal challenge is successful, it could set an important precedent because a lot of other climate wrecking permits could be challenged in the same way. If you want to show your support for actions like this one, hit the link below and donate to the Greenpeace Climate Action Fund. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to our channel for more content like this.